What's up everyone, Marka here from PhoneDog.com and this right here is my 10.5 inch iPad Pro and this has been the only portable device that I have used over the past about four weeks. About four weeks ago, I sold my 13 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar for a couple reasons. One, I knew the new MacBook Pros were coming out and I knew that mine would probably be obsolete. But two is I just never used my MacBook Pro. I always used my iPad. And four weeks ago, I only had just an iPad. They didn't have any fancy keyboards or any attachments to make it a more laptop replacement device. But now four weeks later, after getting rid of my MacBook Pro, do I regret it? Or do I not? Well, let's find out. Now, I'm sure you've heard it before in other people's videos that iPads have been laptop replacement devices for a while, or the other end of the spectrum of saying iPads can never replace laptops. Let me just get one thing straight. The laptop and the tablet will never really merge. I know there are hybrid devices like the Surface that kind of are basically both. I mean, I think those are probably the best devices you can get if you only have money for one device. But if you're someone who needs a portable device that does a few things really, really well and doesn't do some things at all, then an iPad Pro may be the device for you. For example, I got rid of my MacBook Pro because I just never used it. I stopped doing YouTube full time. I have a full time job, but I don't really need to use my MacBook at all because I have a supplied device that needs particular permissions to do stuff that I do. Um, and I just never really used my MacBook Pro. And at home, when I edited videos, I have a brand new 2017 iMac behind me where I do most of my editing or well, actually all of my editing because it's more powerful it has a bigger display it's nicer I don't have to worry about the battery going down or, uh, or decreasing I don't have to carry a charger because again I just need pure performance and I'm not going to get that from a portable especially a 13 inch MacBook Pro or even 15 inch MacBook Pro the iMac is just clearly more powerful and less expensive now if you're a creative and need to have access to applications like Adobe Premiere or uh, DaVinci Resolve or any of those, then you basically need to have some kind of laptop. Now there are some applications for iOS, especially for the iPad Pro, that does pretty light video editing, but there are a couple that do a little bit more video editing and with the storage options of going up to half a terabyte on an iPad, you really can use this thing as your only device. Now let me give you my rundown of requirements I need to have in a portable device that makes it usable for me. Number one for me is battery life. It doesn't have good battery life, I just don't want it. My MacBook Pro, it said it's supposed to have like what, eight, nine hours of battery life. It never got anything close to eight or nine hours of battery life. Some laptops will get that like the Dell XPS 13, but again, I'm not a huge Windows guy. Um, and I really want good battery life. The iPad Pro, it's stated at 10 hours, and you know what? I get 10 hours every single time, and also I have to carry one less charger with me because if I just carry an iPad charger, I can charge my iPad and my iPhone and not have to worry about carrying a USB-C charger for my MacBook, which is a lot bigger. Number two, it has to have a beautiful display. The MacBook Pro has hands down a beautiful, great looking display. It's P3, it's 500 nits, great retina resolution, it's wonderful. The iPad Pro has an even brighter display at 600 nits, the same color accuracy, the same P3 calibration, and I mean, yes, it's smaller, but the resolution is almost as good. Honestly, I think the iPad has a superior display because it's brighter, and it's just, I mean, you can use it, you can touch it, you can't touch the display on the MacBook Pro. Number three is it has to have good audio built into the device. The MacBook and the MacBook Pros have great audio somehow, especially the 12 inch MacBook. The iPad Pro has pretty superb audio. We have four speakers, great stereo separation. They're not front facing, but honestly, they are really good sounding uh, speakers. They work seamlessly with my AirPods. They work seamlessly with Bluetooth headphones. I mean, it's a very big all-in-one package. And number four is storage options. Again, the iPad Pros come in a variety of flavors, kind of basically matching the MacBooks. If you consider a 12-inch MacBook, you can get it in 64, which I, I just wouldn't even bother, 256 or 512 gigabyte flavors. Uh, and honestly, with 512 gigabytes of built-in storage in an iPad, I mean, you have tons and tons of space. And now a built-in files application, like a true 
application for files, um, you can really utilize all of that storage. Now you may be asking, so okay, you get an iPad Pro, how does it really replace your laptop? Well, for me, I actually paired it up with a Logitech Slim Combo keyboard, which I will say it's probably the most ugly case I've ever seen and ever used on an iPad. Uh, but it has this Surface Pro S kind of kickstand in the back, which gives it basically an infinite amount of angles between uh, where it clicks in to where it all the way goes down almost nearly flat. And then the keyboard itself is pretty good. I love this keyboard compared to the Apple Smart Keyboard, which I think is absolute trash. It's also backlit. It doesn't need a battery. It literally runs off the smart connector from the iPad and it draws very little charge. And it's backlit again. It has actual function keys that I can use like volume up, volume down, screen brightness, and even the backlighting um, brightness of the keyboard. Um, it's, it's not super good looking. I mean, again, it has this ugly uh, pencil holder. I don't use the Apple Pencil, uh, but it integrates very well with the iPad and it just works all the time and you don't have to worry about charging it up. And you do get a lot of support with the iPad. I mean, you have a full suite of Microsoft Office applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint. You have Apple's alternatives that are completely free so you don't have to have a subscription like Pages and Keynote. Um, and all that kind of stuff and numbers. Um, so you do have a lot of flexibility and I mean, there's a lot of applications. And with iOS 11, even though it's not the best version of iOS in my opinion, it's probably the best version for iPad on its own. I mean, the multitasking is really cool. Uh, the ability of split screen is really cool. The ability of just being able to use a lot of applications at the same time. The dock makes it super easy to multitask. Uh, it really is the biggest step forward in iOS multitasking, especially for the iPad. May not be on the iPhone, but it is for the iPad. And generally, it's been pretty glitch free on the iPad in comparison to the iPhone, which has been full of glitches. So believe it or not, I am fully into this whole iPad replacing everything, mainly because of its battery life. It's great, it's phenomenal. I can't complain about the iPad battery life. The standby time is amazing and it's instantaneously on. I mean, it literally is instantaneously on. It has Touch ID, has a great FaceTime camera, it has a great back camera, even though I never use it. Um, it honestly is the best Apple portable in my opinion. I mean, if you're in between this and a 12 inch MacBook, I mean, hands down, the iPad Pro is more powerful than a 12 inch MacBook if you're talking about pure performance. Six core, you know, six core processor. I think it has a 12 core GPU. Uh, you can run Fortnite on this dang thing. I mean, it's really, really powerful. Um, I mean, obviously it doesn't run a full blown operating system like Mac OS, but iOS 11 is really, really powerful on the iPad Pro. I mean, it really comes to show that this thing challenges even 13 inch MacBook Pros in some kind of Geekbench performance benchmark. It's a really, really powerful machine. It's super sleek. Battery life is amazing. I mean, I can't uh, talk about the battery life enough. If you have a MacBook Pro, you probably know my frustrations with its battery life and it sucks. The iPad, always good, 10 hours all the time. You have to carry one last charger if you have an iPhone. I mean, for me, again, it, it really is a no brainer. Am I gonna buy the next generation of MacBook Pro? Maybe, who knows? I mean, I really don't have a need for it right now. Maybe if I got back full time into the video game, I'll definitely need to do that. But right now, running on my iMac and running on my iPad, I don't need anything else. I mean, you get a full web experience, you get a lot of great features. Um, iOS, I mean, it, it, it's iMessage. I get the same functionality that I do get on my MacBook, but just in a slimmer, better battery life performance package than any MacBook I have ever used. Yeah, it's kind of ugly with this case, but you know what? Take the case off, it's still a very pretty device. Great resolution screen, great color, great brightness, great everything. Do you need to do that? I don't know, I mean, I, this has kind of been a rambling video, but if you fit the bill where you don't need to do like hardcore video editing or have to have specific applications that only run on Mac OS or Windows, then this, this is it. If I was in college right now, this is all I would take. An iPad, I would have Microsoft Word, my notes application, Safari, all the stuff that I need to survive, and Spotify. Oh, one big thing for me is offline Spotify. Can't do that on a Mac. You can do that on an iPad. There you go. 
Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I definitely want to hear your thoughts and feelings about using an iPad as your only device. Make sure to leave me a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at phone dog underscore Marco. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. See ya.